Today's message is focused on the greatness of God. Today's message is about your role through his greatness. Sometimes we um, incorrectly, inappropriately diminish ourselves. But I understand. We read at least two different authors who, who use the same exact phrase. And they call themselves wretched. I understand that assessment. But only if they agree that all of us are. That none of us more than another. We certainly feel that at different times, but it's it's not a fair assessment. If you remember that John the Baptist, when, when confronted by Jesus Christ to, to baptize him, he immediately said he wasn't even worthy to latch at his shoes, let alone baptize him. Fair assessment. But he spoke for all of us. So when we, when we self-deprecate, it can be a negative, it can have a negative result. One even said, awake my soul, no longer droop in sin. When recovering from his own wretchedness. So again, I understand the impulse to say that. When taking an account of oneself, I get that. But at the same time, we have to we have to recover ourselves, awaken, if you will, that we might be ready to be used by the greatness of God and the intended greatness of God in our lives. I'm going to do a little bit of um, philosophical wandering. Uh, maybe philosophical wondering. I don't know which one it's best categorized as, but I'm going to do a little bit of that. So I'm going to do it through um, maybe some questions and some comments. You sit down on a on a Saturday evening, you sit down on a Tuesday afternoon, and you want to watch a movie. My question is, when did that movie actually begin? Did it begin when you turned it on or went to the theater? Did it begin the moment you started watching it? Did it begin when the final print was completed? Did it begin when they first started filming it? Did it begin when the writer started writing it? If it's based on actual events, did it begin when those actual events took place? Did it begin when that whoever may have written that movie felt the first inspiration before they even went to ink? When did the movie actually begin? All questions, no answers, by the way. When did your walk with Jesus Christ begin? Did it begin in one specific moment? And was that moment the moment you asked to begin your walk with him by way of baptism? Did it begin the first time you went to church? I have such recall as a small, small child going to church with my mom. Did my walk with the Lord begin then? Did your walk with the Lord begin then? Did it begin the first time someone within your family, maybe generations before, connected with Jesus Christ? Did it begin at your birth? Said in Jeremiah, I knew you when you were in the womb. Did your walk with the Lord begin when Jesus Christ hung on the cross? Did your walk begin when Adam fell? Questions, no answers. When did your walk with Jesus Christ begin? Our theme today, in the beginning. As I say that phrase, you have two options. At least King Jamesian options. You have two options. 
the those three words are mentioned two different times. They both are mentioned in the beginning. In the beginning is mentioned in the beginning. And literally, in the beginning of the written word by way of Judah, by way of the Bible. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, Philosophical Wanderings Part 2. In the beginning is a reference to what? In the beginning of what God created the heaven and the earth? I, again, all questions, no answers. But I've read that so many times, and I've never wondered in the beginning and what was intended in that statement. I take it to the beginning of the writing concerning the happenings and the events on this earth. I believe the Bible is written to that perspective. So many people have asked me so many times, well, why isn't this written of? Why isn't that written of in the Bible? If this really exists, if the rest of the universe is so big, why isn't it written? Because the Bible is written to the perspective of here, down here on the ground. I don't, I don't, dive into and delve into reasons why the Bible is not true, reasons why the Bible is not ac accurate. I will engage in those conversations, but I won't allow, I don't know if allow is the right word, but I, I am not comfortable when people use the writings of the Bible or any of the scripture to disprove anything. The omission of something is not necessarily evidence to the untruth it just isn't relevant remember brother alvin swanson was once asked about the old testament what is the old testament what's it about why is it so different why is it not aligned with the new testament in the same type of languaging which is forgiveness and mercy and he said the old testament is the foundation for the message of jesus christ and if you read it in that, in that vein, you don't ask those questions. So going back to Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. I can sit and contemplate that verse right there for hours and hours and hours. And by the way, come to no conclusions. And darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And that statement can bring chills all over my body. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. Result, and there was light. God spoke it, and it took place. In the beginning goes on in the fourth verse to saying God saw the light and then he assessed his creation I the, again I I could scream with joy when I read some of this some of this that some people probably think is flat and unemotional I don't see it that way at all God saw the light that it was good I am starting to um do a few more creative things in my in my other office downstairs. And uh, I, I understand pride comes before the fall, but I'm going to confess my sin openly. And I'll create something or paint something or write something, and I'll sit back and I'll say, oh, okay, I like that. I think that's what God was doing. God was doing it properly. And as a fair assessment, I don't think my judgment is, is fair at all. I'm just looking at my own stuff and say, hey, I like that. But God said he saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. He created that separation with purpose. How many times have you read the word of God that, that talks about the metaphoric difference between light and darkness? God divided the light from the darkness and god called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day 
Now, philosophically, again, day is but a perspective. I know it's 24 hours down here, but even that is imperfect. Asterisk, leap year, but I don't want to get into any of that right now. But even that's imperfect. But it's all a perspective. And I say that because if I sat in Alaska or sat at the top of the earth, well, how long is a day? Summertime, a day is really long. It's beautiful. Candace and I were able to work long. We were mulching and cutting grass and working outside. Uh, and so we were able to work later than wintertime when it, it's dark at six. He separated the day from the night. The evening from the morning where the, was the first day. And what was God's assessment after that first day? And God saw that it was good. And if you read the entire first chapter, at the end of each day, God will assess and say, and God saw that it was good. Chapter ends in the 31st verse saying, and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. In the beginning, I took you to the beginning, if you will, of everything from our perspective. There are other creations that are much older than our little solar system. Be that as it may, this is our perspective in the beginning. John writes of another beginning. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Again, this is John, the first chapter, the beginning of the beginning of John's writing. In the beginning, same phrase, same three words, was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He is speaking in this moment of Jesus the Christ. The same was in the beginning with God. All things made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. This is Genesis 1, part 2. This is a little bit of a clarification so that we understand. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. This is no mistake, this writing. When God created the earth, he separated light from day, or excuse me, light from darkness. John immediately goes to that reference. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. When was the beginning? When did the movie begin? When did your walk with Christ begin? When did Jesus the Christ begin? At his birth? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When did it all begin? When did the ministry or the gospel of Jesus Christ begin? John makes note of the cousin of Jesus. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Goes on to say in the 14th, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. John is now giving a firsthand eyewitness account of Jesus Christ. We saw him, we saw his glory, we saw him glorify the Father full of grace and truth. And then he returns to John. John bare witness of him, John the Baptist, and cried, saying, that this is he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. In the beginning, when did it begin? Mark starts his chapter very, very similarly. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, says Mark in his first verse. 
as it is written in the prophets. And who he's quoting here is Malachi. If you want that reference, it's Malachi 3.1. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Malachi actually writes me, not thee. Goes on to say the voice of Mark goes on to say the voice of one crying in the wilderness, speaking now of John the Baptist. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness, says Mark, and preached a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. When was the beginning? When did the message of Jesus Christ begin? Malachi 3? Isaiah? Ezekiel? Jeremiah? Adam? God's creation separating light from darkness? When did the gospel of Jesus Christ begin? Mark seems to take us to John. Mark takes us to Malachi. Fabulous. So this morning, our message is in the beginning. I ask all of this. I present all of this philosophically, not much more. I'm not giving answers. I ask all of this to ask you, <clears throat> how important is today? Was John aware of the significance? Was Malachi aware of the significance? Was Isaiah aware of the significance in that moment that he scribed those words? That John said those words? That Adam fell? Did any of them realize the significance of what they were doing or saying or writing? Are you aware of all you present. We spend our lives spinning for good reasons, for bad reasons, judging no one of anything. But we have to decipher, even dissect, if, if through awareness, every waking moment, every decision is important. Remember, I used to um, go to the different schools, but mostly this message at the high schools. And it would be career day. And I would speak to what I do for a living. I would speak to an option for these young people. I would be compliant to my duty. But I would end every one of those conversations, every one of those presentations with the power of decision making starting with careers, starting with education, starting with going to tech school, and evolving that conversation to decisions made on a Friday night and share with them some anecdotal, real story that I had been a part of. Kind of a tough love message, sharing with them some of the funerals I had been a part of and had to take the lead in where we lost young people because they opened a back door and climbed into a vehicle with some other young people, either all of which or some of which had made bad decisions, scrambled their brains a little bit and took that car on the road and then took that car off the road. Every waking decision important. In the beginning, where, where does in the beginning lie in your life? At what stage are you? I present to you this today, just a thought. Philosophical meanderings, nothing more. Could it be that today is significant in you making a turn, in you embracing what God intends for you? Is this the day you reinforce the decisions you've been making? Is this the day you continue making decisions?
Is this the day you stop making some decisions? I don't know. In the beginning has many applications. For God, as he created the earth, there were many in the beginnings. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. In the beginning of day seven, he rested. But in the beginning, nonetheless. In what are you ready to begin today? A closer walk? A better walk? More dedication? More continued dedication? Is this the beginning of a, a new plan to read more, to fast more, to pray more, to love more, to forgive more, to embrace more, to open more, to share more? To receive more. In the beginning applies to so much. I'm asking you just to open your heart. To at least contemplate what in the beginning might mean for you in your life. But understand this. In a life that may be spoken of generations from now. One of the first sermons I preached in Oldham County. I don't know that I have the title down, but I definitely have the thought down. And it was, Dane took a science course. That was the theme. What does that mean? My brother went to Palm Beach Junior College and took a science course and met a young lady and fell in love and got married. And she worked in a building and suggested to Candace one day that there was a job opening on the first floor. And Candace went in and interviewed, unemployed at the time, got a job with a company she didn't had never heard of, Dean Witter Reynolds. Three years later, I played softball for a team in Fort Lauderdale, Dean Witter Reynolds. I was a postal carrier. I carried mail. I was a mailman. Getting my, finishing up my college degree. Playing left field for this softball team. The, the manager of Candace's office asked me what I did. And I told him, he said, you should be in our business. Ended up at Dean Witter Reynolds. Ended up taking a job in Kentucky, managing a group of people just like me. Beginning the Oldham County mission, we were at this place because Dane took a science course. In the beginning, where is in the beginning today? Do you understand that what you do today may affect so many others? It may affect you first. And then affect your loved ones and then affect your community. Maybe your branch, your mission. Maybe your lineage. In the beginning, no one's aware when they're standing in the midst of the beginning. I find this group of people, extraordinary group of people, in 1975 at Camp Lutherland fall in love with 500 people. I remember sending a card to my mother. I've fallen in love with 500 people. 1976, I go back because 1975 was so good. I leave that camp out in Kansas, baptized. My life changed. 1977, I go back to another camp out in the Pocono Mountains. I meet a pretty little girl who later I marry. In the beginning, we never know when we're in the beginning of anything. I ask you to open your hearts, open your minds, open your spirits and your souls to what might begin in this moment. Understanding that God's greatness 
is passed on to those that he loves. Not for our honor, not for our glory, to return all of that to him. We are utilized by God Almighty, by the one true God, for his purposes. And where does it start? In the beginning. May the Lord bless each one of you is my prayer.